Hello, this is Telecom TV. We're in The Hague in the Netherlands at the SDN NFE World Congress 2018. And I'm talking with Ignacio Garcia Carrillo of HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Ignacio, welcome. I'd like to begin like this. We're going to talk about the HPE and Intel joint partnership. Do an update on that. We've looked at this in past years and months. Let's do it again, see where we're going to. Question one, what are the trends, the challenges that you're seeing across the industry right now? There's a lot of discussion about 5G, which is fine. I think it's happening eventually, okay. really. Uh, in the meantime, we have other work to do. Uh, the virtualization, ITification discussion, cloudification discussion around the industry goes on. So NFV didn't happen as expected, but it's happening. And we're here, both Intel and HP, to bring the scale of that IT world into the telco and merge it with some of the telco experience we do have in both companies. You made a very valid point, and it's a question I was going to ask you anyway, but you preempted me more or less. Why hasn't NFV happened as it was expected to? The definition of NFV was driven by the operators. Absolutely. Yep. Definitely. Some of the vendors in the industry didn't have a really a motivation to make it happen. It was technically difficult okay, in some aspects, which were not solved at the moment. It's, it's getting solved. It's more mature right now. So there were several challenges. I mean, money-wise, technically-wise, it couldn't happen. Uh, and in the end, there was some frustration, yes. But the reality is it's happening. It's not under discussion. It's just taking a little bit longer. It's happening slightly differently to expected originally. But we're getting there now. Yeah. OK. How is HPE helping CSPs, communication service providers, to overcome the challenges we've just been talking about? Many people in the telco industry, and I am one of them, really, think, tend to think that compute is compute. Which, I mean, it is, but, yeah. but <laughs> there's something else to it. The telco requirements are slightly different to the IT world. They can be complicated, okay? We have an understanding of those IT technologies. At the same time, we have an understanding, at least part of the company has an understanding of the telco requirements. We bring those together, again, with the scale of the IT world and generate, basically we select a subset of our whole portfolio to bring it to the telco industry in a validated way, in a way that actually works for the telcos. Okay, thank you, good answer. Let's get to the nitty gritty of the HP and Intel partnership. How are you collaborating, partnering together to support CSPs as far as 5G transformation is concerned? Is it a bit of a thorny subject or is it all going along swimmingly? <laughs> I mean, all alliances are interesting <laughs> matters, really. Yeah. Uh, for both companies, we are the biggest vendor, okay? Yep. So it's undisputed. We together bring, of course, expertise in telco in both companies. Expertise in IT, definitely. We are both IT companies. We do all the marketing activities you can imagine together. Uh, and there's joint development of products. That would be the fourth leg of the whole thing. Uh, for instances like DPDK uh, that were basic in the whole creation of this ITification of the telco industry. Thanks, Ignacio. This is the last, the last question. Uh, it's again a partnership question. You mentioned earlier cloudification of the network, obviously very important. What is HPE's approach to help CSPs on the path to cloud native? We have spent last year defining a strategy there to address the five year idea. Uh, we have defined a five year strategy, which basically says there are different segments on the network, from the very core to the very edge, with all the things in between. There are different technologies addressing those different sections of the network, which we happen to deliver, by the way. Uh, please select the right technology for each section of the network so that it's 
addressing the real requirements of that section and it's efficient, but make sure that it's open uh, in, in a very specific way. We, when we say open, we mean open managed software defined infrastructure. That's the basis for a telco cloud that encompasses the whole network from the edge to the core and that really enables the operators to offer customers on one side and probably service providers and corporate customers the connectivity in the way that is required. And there is uh, one very specific need on the industry which is compute capabilities. And there's a limit that we are reaching in the device side. There's a limit we are reaching in the cloud side, definitely because of bandwidth and pure compute capability deployment with additional capabilities in the edge. That's the way to continue the expansion of services. That needs those solutions that we provide. Okay. So um, if, if we want to continue the expansion of services in the next 10, 15 years, we need to develop that infrastructure. And eventually it will be sold to customers and probably the OTTs of the world in a way that is beneficial for the operators. I said that was the last question, but listening to what you've been saying, I've got a little, another little one to ask you. You said you, you stressed open, managed, software-defined infrastructure. One of the things that when I talk to people, as we do a lot about NFE and its implementation, there seems to be quite a lot of people when, who, when they went down the open line, didn't think that much management would be required. I thought this will be quite straightforward and we won't need a great deal of management. But then all the emphasis on mano and everything else where, dis that where management became obviously very important. Has that, did that come as a surprise to a lot of people? Did, have people found it harder to do than they expected it would be? There was a lot of focus initially when the NFV movement was created on defining the infrastructure and the mano. Then the realities of first POCs, deployments, focused completely in the infrastructure. We saw that. Yeah. It, it somehow made sense. It was easier to deploy that. Then people realized they didn't get much advantage out of that virtualized infrastructure. And why was it? Because you didn't have the mano. And getting that mano is what enables you to obtain the advantages. And that's exactly what happened in the cloud world 10 years before. Yeah. So when the AWS of the world and the Azure's of the world developed those capabilities to deploy servers very easily through a web interface, they exploded. We're in that same path. Now, the thing here is it's more complicated. It's not end customer easy, but we're getting there. And at that moment, when we achieve that, really the telco operators will be able to extract all the advantage. Good update. Ignacio Garcia Carrillo, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.